Okay, you're just going to start that by bashing your elbow against yeah, the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna, I was going to wait for it to be quiet. How's it going, everybody? Zoinkmeister Patrick here, joined again by Adam of Zoinkmeister. Welcome back. And today, we'll have another podcast, and we'll be talking about the disappearance of disk drives. Something that personally hurts me inside. Yeah, so we feel like this is kind of a, a topical to- topic, and, uh, but hopefully... Topical just... ointment. Yeah. <laughs> Ointment. Oh, it needs to be my ointment. Oh my. Ointment <laughs> is one of the dirtiest. It's like it has all the letters that are disgusting next to each other. Ointment. I don't know how we got off topic so quick. I know. That was quick. This is going to be Disappearance of disk drives. Disk okay. drives. So Adam is, uh, I'll let you start. You're a big fan of, of hard physical. <laughs> big, long. Yeah. Just you like inserting the hard <laughs> disks into the yeah, ports. Sometimes cartridges as well. Yeah. Sometimes cartridges. Uh, so yeah. I, I, I love physical media. Um, I I never buy things digital. The bigger the better. And the bigger the better. When you insert. And when I insert, it cool. has to be as big as possible. Yeah. Sometimes like, if it doesn't work the first time, I gotta take it out and like blow on it. We're taking this. Too far. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. This is too much. Too much already. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So. Uh, do you do you actually though? Uh, this is this is kind of a weird place to go, but do you do you have like a preferred uh, physical media style? Yes, I love cartridges. Okay. And uh, that, well, most of the reason I love cartridges is a they look astounding by themselves outside of a case or anything like that. If you have the box, it looks outstanding, you know, even yeah. better to you. But like uh, in themselves, uh, I love the fact that NES carts, uh, SNES carts, uh, Genesis, even when you like lay them on their side or stack them like like uh, books or whatever, uh, they have you know, their name on the spine. I'm super sad the N64 cartridges don't have their names on the spine. Yeah. But like for the most part, they cartridges. Oh, so you like big boy cartridges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big okay. boy cartridges. When I think cartridges nowadays, I think like Game Boy Advanced, like oh, uh, so I, I call those game packs. Gotcha. Mostly because that's what Nintendo trademarked them as. I mean, even the Switch, they call them like game cards or something. Oh, okay, like, gotcha, gotcha. Least, like, but yeah, we're talking games. like big boy. Like, yeah, yeah, full on cartridges. Yeah, I've uh, of course, well, of course, everyone's had physical devices forever now. But I mean, we're even moving towards like streaming games. Oh and stuff yeah, like that. Google's coming out with that. Uh, yeah. So we should say, um, d- yeah, disk drives appear to be on the. Disappearance. They're on um, the way out. Yeah, Xbox has already announced that they're making a disk drive less console. Go check out the Maverick video. Yeah, on the channel. Um, and so it's a matter of do we think this is good? Do we think this is bad? What are the pros? What are the cons? Even not good or bad, right? What are the pros? What are the cons? So this is one of those things where it's like it's a necessary evil. Okay, yeah, right. I mean, yeah. yeah. So, well, I don't know. So my perspective on it is I personally, as far as I care, about physical discs is I do like game cases. So even if physical discs disappear, I would like it if game cases were still sold as just like, just the art, I guess. Yeah. I know there's, um, there was like this indie box thing that was kind of like um, loot box or whatever. Mm -hmm. But what they did was they, you would get a game, a physical uh, uh, game case for Indie digital. games yeah. that, that were originally digital only. So like Super Meat Boy, Physical Case, and the other, like Finding of Isaac. Yeah, other... Limited Run Games does stuff like that too. Yeah, that's yeah. so that's kind of a, that's kind of the thing where it's like, I would love to have a physical game case for all of the games I own, even if I only own them digitally. But there is a lot of advantages to owning a digital version of the game. And like, in fact, when Spider-Man came out, Marvel Spider-Man, I remember I wanted to get both a physical and a digital version of that game because it's convenient to own a digital version, but I really wanted that game case. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's really nice. Uh, for me, of course, I understand how convenient it is to have digital and then just like the speed aspect. Yeah. It's like, and then it not even like the processing speed, like the physical speed aspect of not having to go open and like right. get a, a disc out of a case, which I, I personally enjoy. Like, like even with my Switch, I was placed on the far corner of the room. It's the most impossible console to get to in my room. And, uh, I remember I had Sm- I have Smash Brothers in there and I I was someone wanted to play Mario Kart with me and I was like, how about we start with Smash Brothers and see if I can make myself walk across the room to start <laughs> to get Mario Kart in there. I have two physical copies of Smash Brothers Ultimate. Wow. Yeah. I have one and I never play it. But that's not what this is about. This is about game case. So yeah, and then we even have so like right now, what's most popular if you're not Nintendo is discs yeah and i don't know i mean discs even have wear on them that's kind of hard to 
you know? Yeah, I mean, um, as far as discs go, I mean, you can even see just like PS1, like onwards, right? Is that discs don't have the same collectability as cartridges do. Yeah. Uh, for the most part, they, uh, you can throw a cartridge into a fire and the fire will just go out in a house. But you know, <laughs> if you look at a disc wrong, right. it might get scratched. So, so I think, yeah, people are, right. Isn't like the famously the NES or the original Nintendo has uh, uh, just like the whole blowing into your cartridge was just terrible for your cartridge, but yeah, just yeah. The very famously like, like, it's like, oh, it doesn't work it. immediately, yeah. whatever. <laughs> Yeah, the, the real problem with that is just that the uh, like the, the rods weren't connecting on yeah. the inside and that readjusting them, like just taking it out and putting it back in would have fixed it, but we blew on it for fun. Yeah. Pretty sure the water, uh, moisture in your breath wasn't good for uh Yeah, so that's the, the thing. Boards. There's a lot of things that's like digital feels more, or uh, physical feels more corruptible than digital. It is, especially with like cloud saving now. Like you yeah. don't even have to worry about your, your console like dying on you like yeah. halfway through like if it right. explodes like you, you didn't even lose all your data nope you just oh well, cool i need to go get a new console or this needs to be repaired but as soon as it's done boop download the game again you boop. own everything yeah, yeah download my cloud save and yeah. we are good to go once yeah if your again. console lights on fire you don't lose your disc you know <laughs> yeah so that's the, if, if my house burns down i'm gonna lose i think uh, at least 300 games yeah that's crazy so, yeah to I'll, be fair though if i will server cry <laughs> is, if the server's ever wiped yeah but that's the thing is that's why I wanted to own like a physical and a digital copy. Yeah. But I yeah, it's it's yeah, that's kind of the one downside to digital then is that I guess I don't know. I, I imagine that's kind of like a weird paranoia thing where it's like, what's the likelihood of your house? How many times has your house burnt down versus the PlayStation has lost track of what games everybody owns? Yeah. So sure. that nobody owns any of the digital games that they had ever owned. It's like, OK, I think the percentage of times yeah. that one happens over the other. <laughs> They're both drastically low, but I feel that. Yeah. You know, um, I, I don't know. It's just to me, uh, some games I will buy multiple times, mm. uh, just to like, I have to have the physical, like you said, like, I yeah, have both. Right. Um, there's time where I've legitimately bought multiple digital copies of things as well. Like, uh, um, I didn't even know you could do that. Uh, well, I mean like on different platforms. So, like, oh. <laughs> uh, so I have Sonic Adventure 2. Yeah. Uh, which is a great Sonic game and a great game in general. Don't let anyone tell you it's not, uh, Sonic Fox died for your sins. <laughs> it's probably not. <laughs> Really good Metacritic score. Anyways, I have that game uh, on the GameCube. Okay. The, uh, uh, Berea, uh, Tell me more. <laughs> I have no, Adam, no, the, no, the, okay. no, just tell so, us. So, okay, so I have the GameCube version, which is uh, a port from the Dreamcast version. Okay. Do you have the Dreamcast version? I don't. Okay. Because that one isn't as good as that You owned a Dreamcast, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Keep going. Yeah. It's just, it's not the superior. I guess it's not the best way it came out. How many copies? Did you say how many copies you own? Hold on, hold on. Just skip to it. And then I have like the PS3 version. Okay. And then I have the PC version. Okay. Okay. And <laughs> that one that I know is digital. Yeah, yeah, it has to be digital. Which uh, we'll, we'll talk so about. So was the PS3 version, exclusively yeah. digital. Gotcha. So I have that game three times. Oh, okay. And I have it once physically. And I mm. probably at some point will pick up the Dreamcast version. Yeah. But for the most part, there's no reason why. But I mean, there's even nice stuff like I bought you um that uh, the original Zelda. Yeah, gold cartridge. The gold cartridge for NES. I was like, oh my goodness, yeah. like that's fancy. See, that, yeah, that, that's a beautiful, beautiful example of like, it's something you can't get with physical. Like, I mean, yeah, sorry, sorry, that's digital. something you can get exclusively with yes, physical. You can't, right, absolutely. the gold sheen of a gold cartridge and all the Zeldas do it. All of them have it since like the first one up or actually, I want to say like the DS games didn't do it. But like every game upwards, like they're uh, for the most part American box art right. will have some gold form. I know the yeah. UK box art doesn't. They like care more about vibrant colors. Yeah. But uh, all the US box art. Alternatively, I got a gold DS Lite, which was the Zelda version of the DS Lite. Yeah. That was really cool. Yeah. I guess that's it's like a handheld. But like, uh, I mean, it's the entire console's gold. They're like, whoa, whoa. that's committing. <laughs> I it's wish it was those gold. like shiny. Yeah, it's like it's like a weird drab gold, but still, yeah. I really liked it. Uh, it has like the off, more drabby gold tripod. Yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's so the advantage of of physical copies is that they are nicer aesthetically to have. I I just I feel that what's happening down the line is it's going to be like vinyls. Yeah. Right. Where you can own all the music you could ever possibly want right. on a service. Yeah. Or uh, digital downloads on an account. Yeah. Or you can have like a shelf that has vinyls on it. Right. And, and that is so much 
it just looks outstanding. Oh, I was gonna say those are the weirdos. <clears throat> what? Uh, Who doesn't like vinyls? No, I, I will say there is this difference of I'm not much Bards of a- Barnes and Nobles is a vinyl store that sells books at the front. I'm not much of a collector person, personally. A uh, collector person? Yeah, but no, I do I do really honestly like having game cases. Like I really wish I could purchase game cases separately from the physical game. Uh, that would be nice for me. And I wish they made game cases of everything, but we can talk about advantages of digital as far as like the producibility and pricing can be lower pricing, easier producibility for digital versions where indie developers have a lot easier time getting their game out if it's digital. Oh yeah, definitely. That's like definitely one of the reasons why most indie games just only exclusively have digital releases. Right, like an indie game has to get really big before like it's like, oh man, I wish I had a physical version of it. Yeah. Uh, th that being, oh my goodness. I got a, like the rarest piece of physical game I own in my collection mm -hmm. is Gravity Rush 2, the physical copy. Do I own? No, sorry. Gravity Rush 1 remastered for the PlayStation 4. Yeah. That game costs That's like- a low print. That game costs like $100, over $100, I think. Does it? Yes. Oh my goodness. Really? Is yes. that just because it's low print? It was only released over Amazon as like a pre-order. Like you could only pre-order it over Amazon was the only physical copies that ever were released. Really? Yes. I did not know that. It is extremely rare. It's insane. It's same thing with Gravity Rush 2. I went to the store to buy Gravity Rush 2 and it was the last copy in my entire city. And we live in a pretty big city. I mean, we're not the biggest city, but we live in a big enough city that that's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> I went to so many stores and I was like, this is the last one in this entire, I even like even used, there's literally not a single copy of Gravity Rush 2. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm looking online right now and uh, these are all the UK version. And they're going for like yes. 40, but the American version is like up in the 90s, yes. 95. Yeah, I did notice that the, the, the UK version was cheaper, but I wanted the American version because yeah, so. I'm American. Of course, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that, that, I do remember that. I do remember the in Europe, because Gravity Rush is more popular in Europe and in Japan, literally everywhere. Everywhere America. but America. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it actually released first in Europe because they like it better. <laughs> <laughs> but this isn't about Gravity Rush. Well, that is bad so, yeah, too. Yeah. That's the thing is, is um, I yeah, I do really like it. Like I bought that because I love Gravity Rush and I do own, I think that's the only game I can think of that I own two copies of because I wanted physical versions of both those games, which I owned originally digitally, I was like, yeah, I love this game. I own it digitally. And then I, at some point I got like a bunch of gravity. When I did the Gravity Rush playthrough on this channel, mm -hmm. I had to do Gravity Rush like every single day. And it, like, it actually moved to my number one favorite game while doing that playthrough, just because of how much time I put into it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I, so I wanted to get like a physical copy of Gravity Rush because like you said, right? If, if PlayStation dies forever and I lose my, all my digital stuff, it's like, I still want to own that physical copy because I love that game so much. And so I do own a physical copy of both Gravity Rush 1 Remastered for the PlayStation 4 and Gravity Rush 2 for the PlayStation 4. And if a future Gravity Rush comes out, like Gravity Rush 3, I would like to own a physical game case of Gravity Rush 3. Even if I don't own the game, I want a case for it just because I have the other two cases and they're really expensive and difficult to get. <laughs> I think the best part about gaming is, uh, or sorry, uh, collecting uh, gaming is that when you collect physically, you you own this. Right, like you own you own Gravity Rush One. Yes. The US remaster. The yeah. PS4. If you bought that digitally, exclusively digitally. Yes. You don't own anything. No. You own the license to re-download that. Yes. So you you literally it's worthless for the yeah. most part. Once you spent your money, that item is now worthless. It is just time and fun. It's excitement. I mean, but for the most part, it's yes. worthless. It's not resellable. Yeah. It's, yeah. As far as resellable goes, but it I mean, has. Like, what do you call it? It's um. It has a, uh, set of sedimentary value, I guess, at that point. Yeah, so, All the value you get from it at that point is exclusively what you take out of it. Yeah, so uh, what happened recently uh, is that uh, some collectors got together okay. and they found, uh, I think it was graded at 92 okay. uh, out of 100, uh, an original sealed copy of Mario Brothers. Really? Sold for $100,000. Oh my god. Yes. That... So, okay, I do want to say though, that is the biggest disadvantage to digital from that I think people could find fault in is that to some is it's not resellable, right? Once you buy a digital version of a game, you can't trade it in or whatever. There's no trade in value, you, you could say. But that being said, I've regretted every game I've ever sold. So uh -huh. well, <laughs> that being said, I, I don't plan on ever selling. I have I have some rare games, some really right. rare games. So there but... is there is the argument of if you're never going to sell it, then it has no value sort of thing. Well, see, the thing is what made that that piece, uh, like $100,000 yeah. sell of a Mario game, 
is that you can buy Mario like bros for, for like two dollars yeah three dollars but free emulation yeah the game itself has no value yeah in itself it is a piece of history yeah it, it's it's mario brothers this is the start this is like the the the, re, the, the rebirth of gaming on on the western hemisphere after yeah. the game crash uh 83 yeah so it's like this is a, a literal monument that is gaming this is like the resurgence Right. Of what we know that would lead up to all the future things that would lead into gaming. This is a, right. a piece of history as yeah. a physical, like the game in itself. You know, you can have the cartridge. You can go get the cartridge. Who cares about the cartridge? Like the yeah. game itself, but like it being preserved is like at this point a rare. That being said, treasure. yeah, I always think it is silly. The the well because they even they made fun of that in the Jimmy Neutron movie, right? Where he had the never before seen oh the never before seen ultron figure yeah yeah where it's like how do you know it's there he it's opens like, it yeah <laughs> it's like you fool <laughs> it's easy i'll show you right now it's in this box it yeah just rips it open so, no so that's yeah. the thing is like like yeah i don't know to, to some degree that is sort of a silly concept <laughs> yeah but i mean it's like it's like one of those things where like let's say <laughs> let's say all the boys get together and they go on a gravity rush burning crusade right they just go into people's homes <laughs> <laughs> Where's the gravity rush? Yeah. Get on the ground! Yeah, so the, the, they slaughter the goats. <laughs> yeah, and then it's just horror. I'm gonna shoot your dog! And then you escape into a vault with your gravity <laughs> rush one copy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At one point, you could like, you could hear like the grating. Get me in the, here. The, the, the sound of boots going over like a grating <laughs> you're hiding in. <laughs> yeah. Where is he? We know there's a copy. This guy's uploaded way too much Gravity Rush. Yeah. Did not have yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, boy. Uh, yeah, see, it's, it's like that. It's like that. You have a piece of history. It's, it's, it's great. It's great. I feel like at a topic at some point it's going to be, do you know anyone else that has such a weird... Oh, yeah, I guess you probably do. I was going to say, it's doing such a weird like. It's like, it's like I like, like Gravity Rush is my favorite game. Uh -huh. It's like... What Gravity Rush? I mean, I guess Harley likes Bayonetta, but Bayonetta, yeah. I think, is even more popular than Gravity Rush. Yeah, Bayonetta is more popular than Gravity Rush, but for the most part, it I feel like it's popular for two reasons, and I'm gonna get some hate for what I'm gonna say. Is that a? Uh, Luckily, we're not even that deep into the. Okay, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. A, uh, it's very sexy, I guess, which is I get <clears throat> for the less literary critiquing. Just bunch. Uh, watch the. Uh, Apex cuts Fortnite yeah. animation, and instead of Apex, just write Bayonetta across the yeah, front of that. It's, it's, yeah, you'll understand. It's sexy, so it already gets like you know the 12, 12 to sixteen it crowd. It creeps me out. I do yeah, not like her she's at all. way too long. She's, I, <laughs> she's like six feet of leg and like a. This six, is not a Bayonetta podcast. Yeah, <laughs> six feet of leg, six inches of torso, seven more feet of neck and head. Yeah, uh, but uh, and then two is and that her body's covered in her yeah, hair. I don't actually hair, know. That's naked. I don't know. I and, guess so. The fact that she's naked is like the anyway. Yeah, whatever. And, and then, the other uh, thing, the fact that it's it's in a genre that in itself isn't well represented like a, of yes. that action genre yeah you have like character action yeah you have like a devil may cry and bayonetta are like the two like living yeah there's like other things you could argue are character action but not in the way that those, those two are, are like true action they like yeah. meet all they they have a terrible story yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. focus on action yeah, focus yeah. on literally things that are so cringeworthily cool that they like <laughs> that it is your perception of which one is which and yeah. like you could argue which one it is but. i don't know i'm watching your guys' devil may cry 3 playthrough and that is it's not it's neither it just seems like they're trying to be funny i assume yeah i mean it's pretty successful yeah i'm not saying it's not success it's just not cool there's just no way to call that yeah, cool the thing they're going for is stylish oh. that's that's the way they i know oh belts i saw a uh <laughs> Just the word belt. Belts. I <laughs> apparently I saw the Ego Raptor Aaron Hansen from the Game Grumps. There's an old drawing from it's it's in his like he had these old artwork videos on the channel a little while back and he showed some of his old artwork and one in one of them he drew this guy that was a parody of Final Fantasy character uh -huh. and he was covered in just belts. <laughs> he had a belt halo above his head and a part of his hair was just a belt. It was like a bang that was coming down in the front. It was just a belt around it for no reason. Like it didn't tie it back. It was just around the yeah. like like imagine one of um like Knuckles' is like dreads Weird, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Imagine like just a belt around one of those. Not tying them together, just a single yeah, one just of those. <laughs> I love 
Final Fantasy designs, they, they always have too many zippers. Yeah. They'll have a, a giant sword and that sword will have a trigger. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Pull my devil trigger. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Anyway, like, this is about physical They'll have, the, the female characters will have armor all along their like shoulders and thighs. So like they're yeah. legitimately covered, but then the torso will just be no. completely like barely cover the nipple. <laughs> navel's completely exposed, just stops oh right at the waistline. Yeah. I don't know. Physical media, we're on. Physical well, media. So yeah, that's so anyway. You can't preserve, I guess, for the most part because yeah, pros of digital media is it can be preserved, it can be transferred probably more easily. I assume if you want to like do a new console generation and stuff, I yeah. imagine them having digital copies has helped with that a lot. Uh, there's yeah, it's you know the fact that you can re-download if anything goes wrong. The fact that yeah, there's faster blast processing. I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> the second, the it's transportable. Second quote unquote transportable yeah. it's as transportable as your console i guess which is right kind of for the nice. most part you don't have to bring anything you right. can sign in on someone else's ps4 right the annoying part is like if, you, if i went to a friend's house and i wanted to is like oh dude i'm gonna bring my game but also my save file it's like i guess i'm bringing my whole console and my game and any other games i want oh, well i mean you don't in. have to do that for modern gen because you could just sign in and then download your cloud save exactly that's what i'm saying that's digital though well, i mean for both oh because yeah your cloud save is Regard, it's always a no, I'm saying like, like, let's say I take a vacation trip to the beach or whatever, right? I go to the beach. I want to bring my console with me. Okay. And it's I used to back in the day have to bring my console and a case with every game I owned because mm -hmm. I didn't know what I wanted to play. Uh, now I could just bring the console, which saves space. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Vacations, I always just took portables. But uh, I, yeah, I mean, there's that. And that's the thing is like, you know, if I had a good portable game, I guess I'd play that. But, you know, it's, one, it's like, I don't know if I can play the console. I like I love like 500 hours in the Pokemon Emerald. But uh, there you go. Pokemon Emerald is the only Pokemon game I've ever beat. It's a really good one. It's it's good. I like it. I like it a lot. It's not my favorite, but I like it a lot. Um, It's like my second favorite. <laughs> 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 I guess I'll give it that. Uh, or third, maybe. Don't, I, don't explain what no, <laughs> that I'm not. was number one. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. When I when I look at games, uh, and I look at my shelf, and it's wide and 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 and, and has these huge plots of land, right? <laughs> it's a very girthy shelf. Okay. I yeah. I feel happy. I We're feel proud. It's something where if somebody asks, "Hey, what games do you have?" I can physically point, look over there. Yeah, that is the thing. We were um, recently trying to make a list of of games that we had, or we we're looking at games we had, whatever. And it was kind of weird where it was like, okay, wait, let, let me look. Actually, it was pretty convenient to just pull up my digital library and see my list of achievements. Just scroll down. It's like, these are they. Yeah, and these it's like, are they. That was surprisingly convenient, actually. I was kind of worried personally that I was like, I don't know how I'm going to represent my digital. But no, digital libraries are as far as like, you know, they don't look as good, but they're a lot easier to convey. You could yeah. definitely like scan, 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 scan through a digital library yeah, a lot. Yeah, it's super clean when it just has like the title and like the box art and you scroll yeah. through. Yeah, and, so, and it, can, it can look really nice just having like tiled box art you yeah. know, on top of each other. It's like, ooh, that's, you know, kind of see those colors and stuff like that. It, it definitely has its own kind of thing going for it. Yeah, if you have like one of those third uh, third party website, like collection sites where they you can yeah. log in all your information. Yeah. Just keep track of everything. It usually looks really nice. Yeah, so, so I mean, that's not bad either, right? It's not bad either, but I like to, I get so many so that's the thing. Would you be okay? Like, let's say future, right? Like, um, there's no place to insert a physical game well, into your console. So that's where we're heading, regardless. Right. And I know that. Uh, everyone knows that. Right. The, uh, the PlayStation had to come out and say the PS5 will have a disc tray. Yeah. Uh, Xbox had to come out and say we're gonna have a stream box, but there's also gonna be a box with a disc tray. Like, right. It, it sounds like it's a bonus feature at this point. Yeah. So. They, um, like like Xbox only had to because PlayStation did it first or whatever. Yeah, yeah it's like so. I'm like we're all aware that we're stepping yes. towards the which I, even like Steam right PC gaming is no they've dip. Been it's been discless forever. And PC games tend or Steam games tend to have a lot of sales and can be like pretty definitely. cheap. They, the, they definitely like have proved that you can like go real low on pricing if you if you don't have to don't worry have about any physical. kind of physical release that's, marketing. Yes, exactly. Because yeah. that's the thing. Even though. Um, Consoles have digital releases. The fact that they they have to make those physical copies, even if no one bought them. Yeah. Like I'm not saying like nobody buys. I'm saying like if nobody bought them, right? Let's say they make a, like the next Call of Duty. Nobody, not a single person buys the physical disc. They still make thousands. Yeah. Of everything millions from of plastic discs. Like, to box art. Yeah. To uh. And all that has to get discs. paid for, whether yeah. or not it gets bought. Yeah. 
And so they can't drop the price of digital games like Steam can. Not because, even counting shipping. Right, because Steam has no physical version. You That's not an option. So they can drop prices like, you know, in a lot more places. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. So I feel we're moving towards that where I, I'm not going to be able to buy PS6 or yeah. Xbox 720 games. Right, so then, <laughs> that's what I'm saying is, so my question was then going to be, how content, if at all, would you even want this if uh, disc cases still came out as an option, just empty disc cases? So here's the thing. Do you have any interest in that at all? I have Tekken 7. Yes. And I have the Tekken 7 Steelbook. Yes. I didn't buy the special edition. I bought the Steelbook. Okay. Steelbook looks great. Yeah. I had Halo 2. Regular. Steelbooks all look yeah. great. So I had the Halo 2 regular yeah. edition and I had the Steelbook yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. And nice. I didn't have both copies. Right. I am totally fine with owning a blank case. Yes. And that's the thing. So I'm, I would love that I, to some degree, I kind of wish, like, I, I kind of wish that we would like move on to the digital age just so that I could buy blank cases now. Like, I mean, I not every game has a Steelbook. Like Gravity Rush doesn't have a Steelbook. I, I, I wish would, it did. Yeah. I would. See, that would be even better if, if you could, it wasn't just like if, if they didn't even have like the little insert for the disc to go. Well, so that's the thing is that, yeah, just be a steel book. I would exactly. love if every game had a steel book. Oh, my God. No, because if you go to all digital, then the only people buying disc cases want it for the art. Yeah. And so you can commit to art 100%. on your. Yeah, yeah. Your game case is now no longer functional. It's exclusively an art piece for the person who bought it. And so anyone who wants to sell their 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 game case will that will be their marketing scheme right that's what they're going for that's what they mean so i think it could even be a positive for the physical game media market it, as a as a game collector you can have nicer and nicer box art because that's what is selling that's literally all that they'd be selling at that yeah. point um so i'm thinking it could even be a good thing for some physical collectors see uh really interesting i was listening to another podcast uh even though this is the best one you should stay on this one uh, <laughs> is, <laughs> don't listen to any other podcast uh, yes, don't listen to any satan commands you only listen to this one. <laughs> subscribers pop down <laughs> <laughs> numbers just drop we're not uh, satanists i swear so uh this guy who's part of the ign team okay. uh <laughs> for some reason my my brain immediately just stopped listening to you yeah i was like wait no 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 Pay yeah, attention. <laughs> those guys are fun uh okay so uh he went to Kansas yeah. on a family vacation and he took uh, either his Xbox One or PS4, I don't remember. Okay, another random brain autocorrect. I heard Canada and I was like, that's not what he said. What did he say? Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> you had to think to yourself, quick, Patrick, you're still talking. Yeah. <laughs> so um, he went to Kansas. He started downloading Red Dead. Okay. And uh, I, I believe he said he was there for a week and he couldn't download it. Wow. Because it's like, uh, like a 200 gig yeah. game or something. Like he couldn't do it. Uh, so as Just far as it digital goes. Digital only? Is that... You're yeah, saying he was trying to download the game because well you could you have to download it you don't have a physical game but you have to install it oh that doesn't require any no internet yeah, you, just, you just pop in the disc gotcha gotcha okay uh two Continue. discs actually because it's so big but Red, that's yeah that's Red the Dead that's the processing of the content yeah it has you which know, one do you put into play so you put in the first disc which is entirely for install and that'll take two hours and then it'll say please switch to disc two oh you pop my that out, goodness and then you put in the other disc that says game disc and then that will finish installing the game and we'll run the game that's kind of silly i mean i understand yeah it's a big game from this kansas perspective of like yeah if you if you're there for a week and it never downloads that's a little crazy but also the fact that you have to have two discs for a single game, we're at a point where that's just a little ridiculous. Well, I mean, they used to do that in PS1. Final Fantasy VII was four discs. That it's not any less ridiculous. I'm not. I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. That's it's, still ridiculous. It's one of those things where uh, you have to consider that. Just See, because uh, I personally always really hated. Uh, sorry for the knuckle pop, by the way. I'm always personally really hated having multiple discs per game because I had like. Uh, some game like Halo 3 had a separate disc for the multiplayer. I was like, I don't, I don't play the multiplayer, first of all, but like, I don't want to have See, two discs. I'm actually fine with that. Like, um, I guess it kind of depends on what the second, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm fine with that, honestly. Mm. Now that I think about it, I, I was going to bring up Halo 2. Master uh, Chief or uh, uh, Mass Effect had a second disc just for art, I believe. Yeah, I guess bonus, bonus material. Yeah, that was a but, weird uh, one. It's like, uh, if I wanted to play multiplayer, I would be fine with just putting in the multiplayer disc. Or if I wanted to play campaign, I'm fine with putting in the campaign disc. I really don't care. Uh, I like, I, again, I'm a physical guy. I like yeah. everything physical. But um, even for the most part, I, that, I feel like that also adds to the, oh, yeah, this is a two disc game. Like, uh, I have five GameCube games that are two disc games. That's really discouraging for yeah. me. Um, one of them is ultra rare and it's like a three, four hundred dollar game. Wow. Uh, but one of them was like uh, bonus material, limited print run. Gotcha. And then uh, the other ones are just legitimate, like, this game's too big. 
Oh wow. Uh, Resident Evil Zero. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah it, it, two discs. Yeah. Resident Evil HD. Okay. Two discs. Oh. Uh, Metal Gear Solid: The Twin Snakes. Wait, sorry, you have Resident Evil HD for the GameCube? Yep. They made an HD version for the GameCube. Mm, y- y- yep. What did the original game come out for? PlayStation One, right? Yeah. Was GameCube that much after PlayStation One? Uh, yeah, that's like a 1990. Like I want to say like a like a like a four all the way to like 2001. Really? Yeah. We'll fact check it. Anyway, um, continue. I was, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm personally uh, surprised. Go ahead. So, um, this HD, the GameCube was an HD? No, it's. I think it's just called Resident Evil. Oh, it was just like a and red The concept sub? of HD wasn't even in. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, that's. I guess that was one yeah, of the reasons. Like, I was one. like, wait, yeah, yeah, what? No. I didn't even know They, they ended up coming out with the actual Resident Evil. GameCube outputs so, yeah. in HD? <laughs> it redid the, uh, it was a remake. I mean, uh, it's Nintendo, so like, honestly, if you'd been like, yeah, of course the GameCube outputs at like 4K. I'd be like, of course Nintendo would <laughs> have a 4K output before that's of even course. reasonably yeah, possible. They, they, the GameCube, I, I, for all of you, you, uh, you, I, I don't know, the visual files out there who know how special the the GameCube is in terms of its weird uh, uh, visual outputs. <laughs> Patrick, you can either play with the 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 standard, uh, you know, uh, red, white, yellow cords, right? Okay. Or you can play with RGB cables. Okay. Which uh, have a super crisp picture, as yeah. close as you can get without HDMI. Yeah. And uh, going right now, they're like two hundred dollar cords on eBay. Wow! Used. Oh my goodness! Because they were so limited print. That's and, crazy. Yeah, they're like, well, we have this digital option that nobody's going to use, but we'll just have the port there for fun. Wow! Yeah. yeah. So, so it's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm not expensive, but they 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 do things all like that where they're always ahead of the curve, like randomly have like the Nintendo's NES weird. or like the Famicom had like internet support. Yeah. That being said, I guess the new Nintendo consoles are. Kind of the other direction on as far as graphics go they're like not like our games are 4k Blah. yeah no no it, yeah no. <laughs> skyrim no. plays like dookie okay <laughs> skyrim, I mean, skyrim always plays like dookie yeah so it's uh, the thing like even yeah even the how big are the uh the file size of the the new sd cartridges that the <laughs> the switch has um i think they go like 5 10 and 30 gigabytes yeah See, that's small. Like you couldn't fit Resident Evil 2 on a 30 gigabyte. Uh, so the thing about uh, those those magicians at uh, Resident Evil 2, you think they can do it? No. Yeah. Well, actually, yes, but it's going to look far so far. The uh, same with right. Wolfenstein. Fair. The same with Doom. Fair point. You can play it. It'll run. It won't run. Well. Yeah. Um, but when it, when it comes to first I, party, if you can please please Adam, I you, you can text me this later if you have to to need the picture. You need to throw up the picture of the. Uh, Wii, the Call of Duty Black Ops, I think, the Wii version versus the PlayStation 3 oh, version. Oh, it's going to be so bad. Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> the Wii version looks Just like a out. different game. <laughs> it looks it, like a DS game. Like, yeah, like I think a char- <laughs> one of the characters is a different ethnicity. And, and like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's how bad it is. It was easier to make him. Yeah, like, it was so weird. Reuse use assets and color palettes. That is the worst the like port i've ever seen of a game as far as well no there's also the um the i don't know if you could show this in a picture but there's the the middle earth shadow of mordor oh that was bad playstation 3 that was one of those games where they had the ps3 ps4 double yeah launch oh my god that oh, was terrible the old ver- no it wasn't a double launch they had to port it to down to playstation 3 they ported it. it's an after port yeah because everyone was like because people hadn't bought the PlayStation 4 yet. It was still oh, kind of early on. That's so bad. Yeah, it came out it so early. It terrible. There's like, I, texture popping isn't a term strong enough <laughs> to describe <laughs> what happened. It was almost like game popping. Yeah, like, it yeah. It was horrible. Oh, no. It was, it looked like, like Minecraft on like a potato the when poor, like the world yeah. has to load in after you. The poor PS3 couldn't keep up with that. That's yeah. So, why would they? It's torture. They tortured <laughs> that poor box. Jesus. Oh, that's so, so yeah, there's. There's stuff like that where it's like, but that's that's not the fault of digital cop or digital versus physical. That's just a game that shouldn't be ported down. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, we're even talking. Oh yeah, those GameCube games, right? Yeah. So the GameCube in itself already has smaller discs. Yeah. They use those smaller discs to like, uh, you know, uh, protect them from, uh, you know, people stealing, ripping their games. Yeah, Nintendo's really big on that. Yeah, I always have been. Um, so. 
It's already a smaller size, and then you're putting Oh, games. that's right. That's See, that feels even more dumb, where it's like, oh, it required two discs. It's like, why don't you just double the freaking size of the disc? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's one of those things where they could have had normal discs. Maybe you guys were retarded. You could fit full <laughs> games on your discs. Yeah, which there's a way. I mean, proprietary. The Dreamcast had a... I guess the Dreamcast is a bad example, because they were super. They got destroyed. Yeah, the, right. All the games are ripped. I think, but, yeah, I think that's a good example of how that doesn't work. Yeah, but I think even like uh, the PS2 and PS1 used... Uh, like a special waveform on the edge of the disc that had to be detected by a secondary laser or something like oh, that. It was like awesome. really, yeah, really neat trick. I mean, eventually you're gonna bypass it. Like, yeah. yeah, they're gonna emulate it eventually, but yeah. to help the beginning of, a, of the lifespan of the console is the most important part. But um, yeah, they put on those small discs. So yeah, I needed two discs to play the same experience as this yeah. one disc. I've actually played a PlayStation 2, um, like hack games, whatever. Like I played Black the play on PlayStation 2. I played it, it was a, um, it was definitely a fake version Crack, of the game. Yeah. yeah. I was like, this like this looks like <laughs> this looks sketchy. Yeah. You yeah. <laughs> they misspelled it. Yeah. I was yeah. in, I should say, I was in a I was in a, a foreign country at the time. So the best part is when the uh the art on the disc is like faded or like Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it was, like light. I was like, this doesn't look right at all. You can tell a game's crack because the game cases were like so thin they oh, were yeah. like off brand oh they like, were so waffle thin <laughs> it was it's like disgusting so, so very waffle like you even tell yourself like what what is supposed to go on this disc? yeah this is no, like the lowest budget yeah like like straight to yeah, Nickelodeon, it was definitely, straight yeah. to vhs and like, tape. yeah the cover jacket was just like definitely print out piece of paper yeah like, it's all faded uh, toners like it was running out of ink halfway yeah. through the run yeah, yeah. and the, i guess there's that part of the physical disc option system whatever is i don't know how comparably like stealable they are to digital media versions yeah and so you have to account for game companies don't like that it's i i, I guess when when i when i think of collecting i don't think about the game company whatsoever it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's like no, that's I, the thing that I was one thing that i was as honestly unfortunate well so gravity rush is such an unpopular series that when i bought gravity rush 2 the physical game i wouldn't case, say unpopular i would say uh niche niche such a niche it's definitely not disliked no, nobody dislikes Gravity yeah, Rush. People love Gravity Rush. I guess it's so. Just unpopular, not that many people. Yeah, yeah, unpopular is a. I meant like unfamous more yeah. than anything. It's no, it's just nobody's heard of it. It's like the Psychonauts of today. I, I, I'm my guess. Adam actually said this originally. My guess is in like ten years or whatever, or twenty fifteen it's gonna years. Be huge. Yeah, people are gonna be like, dude, like nobody. Where's Gravity Rush yeah, three, Reggie? Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> come on, Reggie. Come on, Bowser. I guess now. <laughs> yeah. Sad. Rest in peace, Reggie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, it's uh, so when I bought the physical game copy of Gravity Rush 2, I wanted to buy it in a like I, I wanted to make sure I bought it in a store because I don't think I could buy it on Amazon or anything. It's like that game was disappeared so quickly. Yeah. So like I want to buy it in store just so I knew that some of the profits went back to the company. And when I got Gravity Rush 1, I was really sad that I had to buy an eBay version because the profits went to whoever bought the game originally. Yeah, and I was like, I really wish I could have like. So that's why I bought a lot of Gravity Rush merchandise for the sake of just uh, I uh, showing interest. Yeah, yeah, I bought it all from stores that I know would give the money back to the company to some degree. And so it's like I, I was thinking about getting a figurine, which are all very expensive. Oh, oh, my gosh. Gravity Rush figurines are I, stupid expensive. I tried to get one uh, for Patrick's birthday. And yeah, I was like, OK, how, how how much could these really be? And I click on one. Two hundred dollars. Yeah. Like, yeah. But there's no like yeah. uh, first party uh, five inch vendors figures. for it anymore. So that's why I ended up not going for that. But yeah, a lot of the stuff I own, I got because I was like, oh, this would be fun. Like I I bought the the game soundtrack like three times I think just to, just because I know the sound I bought it on the PlayStation Store. You should buy a vinyl of it. I if that exists I would do it because that's the thing. I don't even own a record player but like I would go for anything I could do to like support the developers show that there's someone in America cares because <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing of that game is translated it's so bad <laughs> it's there's zero support for that game in America. As like from the developers, the developers do not care about the American market of Gravity Rush. Yeah, it wasn't even at E3 when it came out. Gravity Rush 2, the trailer was not at E3 and they had like a playable demo on the floor. And I like watched people playing it and they're like, I don't know how I ended up in that route in this room. And the developers like, do you want to try our game? <laughs> and he's like, I guess so. <laughs> we have milk and cookies. Yeah, I only found like one, I think on YouTube, I found like only one video of someone playing the show showroom floor of the game. And I was like, it wasn't in E3. They even have like at E3, they always have that, you know, like mega compilation of games that probably somebody cares about. It wasn't in the about. exclusives It only. wasn't in the exclusives only mega compilation of random games that nobody looks at because you, they go by so fast. Do you remember that one time 
when we went searching through the, <laughs> <laughs> we went searching through the PlayStation exclusives. It was yes. we on the PlayStation Store. It wasn't like we weren't going through a catalog. Yeah. We were on the, the funny PlayStation part is like the store. extra yeah the extra big dig is that they were like it, like it was called like like the reason to own a PlayStation or something like that. And there was just a list of PlayStation exclusives. It was just the exclusive. It was every PlayStation exclusive. Except Gravity Rush except 2. Except Gravity Rush 2. It was the only one. I Literally. was so sad. They added it eventually. It's on there now. Down the line, yeah. Yeah, but it was just like for a long time, it felt so bad. And even the uh, anyone out there, near Automata, much more famous game, the developer of near Automata, for a while, um, PlayStation, I mentioned this already, I think in a previous podcast, um, or maybe it was in a video, I'll mention it now. The PlayStation had this little promotion where they um, took a bunch of developers. You could look at a developer for your favorite game. Uh -huh. And the, if you clicked on the developer, you could see a list of games that that developer recommended that were not developed by them. Like these are games we recommend developed by other developers. And um, so they had like uh, Studio Red, the, the, the developer of, of The Witcher, like what he recommended. And then they had like the developer of, um, I wish I could remember some of the other games they had, but they're all contemporary, very famous games at the time. Like, uh, no, God of War wasn't out yet. I'm trying to remember. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn was another one, the developer of Horizon Zero oh, Dawn. Oh, yeah, Gorilla. With, yeah, well, yeah, like what the, the main developer recommended. And so one of them was Nier Automata, which was actually was really popular. The developer of that, it was a list of games he recommended. And Gravity Rush 2 is on that list. And he's like, this game is the perfect fusion of AAA and indie. And I was like, like... <laughs> I was like somebody cares yeah of course all of his recommendations were japanese produced games so he recommended like um metal gear solid 5 and uh also a great game yeah i think like near near not near near is what he made neo he recommended neo yeah. he recommended metal gear solid 5 he recommended uh gravity Rush 2 yeah center on kagura Peach, Peach, Splash. nope that was not on there surprisingly <laughs> that's weird that's a that is one of my rare games yeah yeah okay so if anyone, uh, you're I'll, not wrong. I'll put a graphic on screen. I'm uh, sure you If will. you're under 18, look away. Are you uh, going to put up a graphic of uh, the tickly, tickly? No, no, no. Nothing bad happens. They okay. just read their Book of Mormon and they go to bed every yeah. night <laughs> <laughs> at 8 p.m. sharp. Oh. So, Center on Kagura Peach Beach Splash is a third-person shooter a bikini blast. I, I, I don't know. It's the it's a mm, not recent, I guess anymore. It's not recent. It came out like what, 15? Yeah, member of the Center on Kagura franchise. And that franchise in itself is niche and somehow popular at the same time it is surprisingly long yeah and there's uh, a i should say there's a lot of things in that franchise surprisingly it started on ds it's weird but um so that the reason the reason i bought that game and no i'm like i'm not one of those guys who like goes out and buys porn games is that uh i heard from a podcast nobody believes you now i know it's too late i platinum that game by the way <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's next the entire soccer is yeah, yeah like i don't even like these games i just own them all we should, yeah we should play a soccer sealed game. and unsealed we should not play a soccer game at some point but we should play a soccer game so, <laughs> there's so many if anyone has access to steam please please go on steam type in sakura into the search bar and just look at how many games are in the There's soccer so series. Many. It's insane. But anyway, go uh, on. So anyways, uh, I heard from a podcast. They talked about it. They're like, oh, yeah, there's some like bikini blast game or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, bikini what? And they're like, <laughs> yeah, third person shooter, water gun, bikini fighting game. Yeah. And I was like, OK, that sounds yeah. stupid. And they're like, it released uh, in Japan and uh, uh, Japan uh, physical and then every in the UK and America. <laughs> It has, oh, yeah. it has a digital release and I was like, there's a digital release of this game and I go on the uh, PlayStation store and there's a digital release of the game and I was ah. like, I've never even heard of this franchise ever. <laughs> and they're like, uh, they're having a physical release. I really am just hearing German night music playing in my head <laughs> the entire time you're talking. Go ahead. So, so they, uh, he was like, they're having a a small uh, a small numbers released boxed art special sale exclusively like at Best Buy. Yeah. And I was like, what? Yeah. And I was like, in itself, Best Buy isn't, you know, it's not a, there's only a few. You yeah. Know, there's not, a, it's not a store where you can, there's like one every like 200 miles. Yeah. So I was like, what? And uh, and he's like, yeah, it's going to be like a limited run. It comes with like uh, uh, the manga artwork, anime oh. artwork. It comes with the game. It, it comes in a box. It comes you realize with, this makes it creepier, right? Yeah. And I was like, what? And they're like, oh yeah, limited print run. Nobody even knows about it. If they're like, you're a collector, you should probably pick it up. And I was like, I'm a collector. Yeah. So uh, I went there and sure, there was two. Did you buy both? No, I bought one. You fool. It was eighty dollars. Wow, you it, still should have bought both. <laughs> at so I'm like, oh, if it's eighty dollars at launch and like nobody buys these, I should have bought both. Probably. Yeah, probably and we, it, you yeah. should have left one like in the box, mint condition. Yeah. Twenty years from now, somebody's gonna pay a billion dollars. Of course, for that. yeah. <laughs> so 
yeah, that game was like one of those like, oh yeah, limited print, low run, it doesn't matter. I could have got the game on digital, who cares? Yeah. Because I have the physical of it. And I guess that's almost a cringeworthy example, but uh, there, there's games I have in the collection where like I... I don't think you would have bought that game digitally. Like, I, would you? I, no, I would have never bought that game, okay. period. I would have never <laughs> bought it if it had a re regular physical release and it was high yeah. print, ever. If Gravity Rush 3 comes out with like a ultimate edition or whatever you want to call it. You're with like, buy the ultimate yeah, edition. Yeah, like, yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's it's just like that, where a lot of my games I have, uh, I, I have multiples. I have, I think my favorite game in my entire collection, Not it's not my best, not my most expensive, is I have a copy, uh, near mint of Pokemon Red, uh, the Japanese import. Yeah. In the box, and it looks brand new. Yeah. Like, brand, brand new. And I have... I have just the cartridge outside the box, not in that one. I have a separate Japanese yeah. uh, imported Pokemon Red and then the English Pokemon imported Red. Yeah. So I have three three of that game and then I also have it on 3DS when they re-released it. Yeah. So I have that game four times and then... Uh, I think most of my favorite games are rare. I'm pretty sure finding like mint condition versions of all my favorite games would probably be a terrible task. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, trying to find Wet and Darkness 2. And <laughs> if there was a physical release of Call of War as Gunslinger, I would have to own that. Uh, That'd be such a limited, like, we made four yeah, of these. We, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody bought them. Well, I mean, it's like, it's like, a, well, Nintendo doesn't really do it anymore, right? But like in the old days where they'd make world championship editions of cartridges. Oh, yeah, yeah, where, yeah. Where, oh, you have to be like the first four runners up and yeah. the world championship will get this yeah. four off cart. Yeah. And somehow Seto Kaiba shows up and rips up three of the like <laughs> yeah. the blue eyes white dragon carts and now there's one in existence <laughs> like uh stadium events is like it's like a hundred thousand dollar cart as well or like oh my god it's expensive really expensive carts yeah because they're so low print and it doesn't matter if you can play that dang it's a terrible game digital yeah but it's it's in it's in itself is both a piece of history and art yeah so that's the thing that's um so i don't know it is kind of like a backwards and forwards on the whole uh digital versus physical but one thing I think before we should, because uh, it's already getting kind of long with this podcast. Yeah. Uh, pricing? Yeah. How do you feel? Do you think games We should... mentioned it. We mentioned it with the Steam thing. But see, one thing I noticed is that... Well, okay. There's another thing that games are getting more expensive to produce. So there's a chance that switching to digital is just like a keeping up. Like that's the only way yeah. to keep it low. So I, I feel that if they went all digital, I feel like it's going to hurt at first, but nobody's going to change the $59.99 that's what i'm US saying price. yeah they're gonna stick with it right and then uh eventually when we go discless it's gonna be 69.99 if you want the physical release version of this game and then you're probably gonna have to order it from somewhere like you can't even yeah. just go into a store like you no. know hey we have uh, like amazon exclusive yeah we have ten thousand copies that's what, of this yeah game. that's what gravity rush one remastered was exactly exclusively amazon it, exclusively pre-order yeah, exclusively pre-order exclusively amazon and like it's it's that's what it's going to be. I mean, for the most part, the price is still the same. But yeah. They could have not had, you know, it yeah. could have been the same thing. Where Actually, one of my favorite um, cases I own is the Borderlands Handsome Collection for the PlayStation 4. Handsome. Yeah, it has a sleeve, which is, a, it has a textured sleeve. So it's not a steel case, but... Um, Texture sleeves are nice. Yeah, the texture. Oh, I mean, like for, you know, it didn't add any price to it. You know, I mean, a Tekken 6 had a textured sleeve. Yeah, and uh, that's just that's it's just not even a good game. I mean, yeah. it's it's a cool fighter, but yeah. it's not and it's like, like a legendary the, game. If, you, if anyone's seen the Hands Collection, the, it's a uh, bandit mask, that, but it's all plated gold. Yeah. So it's this really nice laminated gold look, and it's all like really gold textured. Is it holographic? I can't. No, 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 no. no. Thinking, okay. No, it's just like a it's just a shiny gold, and then yeah, yeah, it's just lam it's just a textured you know laminate whatever. It's, it's, it's things like that where we go back, we're like, oh, now they can focus more on art. Exactly. Well, I feel yeah. if they if they just came out and said, hey, we're only making like twenty thousand copies of this game. Yeah. physical uh has really nice box art yeah it's gonna cost like 70 or like you yeah. know whatever bucks but the like uh, pre-orders are out now yeah and that's gonna be swooped away and then the game is still out on digital right that'd be and if you buy like the hard case i don't know if they'd make it come with the digital i or just like the digital would be separate because that's the thing they do like um you can I'd buy be, yeah i'd be willing to pay 10 more dollars every single time yeah. Give the companies more of my money if it yes. meant when I put my disc in, if it does have a physical, that I got the digital game as well. Right. Oh, like, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, I, I, even, yeah, the, even like for as long as discs last, that's an immediate change I'd like to see is if I yeah. put a physical version of a game into the like, thing, I want to unlock the license to the digital version. Yeah. Like, I think it's silly that they have the digital and physical versions be separate ownership or whatever. Yeah. Cause that's, 
That's honestly ridiculous. One thing I I will always give Xbox props for is the backwards compatibility thing. Yes. Where you put in a disc and it will scan, uh, download the newest version yeah. of this disc and you have your old game, the new license to it. Yeah. And your... plus, since it's an older game, you know, there's, you know, chances of like scratching and stuff like that. And yeah. it's like, it, you have that digital copy now. You have the digital copy. You don't need to take it out of the case. It anymore. can play, yeah, so much more smoothly than, yeah. than you know, the, the old technology that could handle. So. Um, yeah, I think there are like ways to even as far as long as physical copies can last. I think there's ways to make it better just by like incorporating some hybrid digital options. Yeah. And then when they go away, I would love to see cases becoming like a big collector's item and stuff like that. And being, you know, being something you can still buy and be, you know, I hope they can up their game with that and make it like a something you'd want to purchase for what it is. Yeah. Um, so I think that's sort of the future that I would like to see. Uh in a realistic light you know that's what, it's kind of what i'm saying yeah um so at the end of the day every LA, every development team is a business that yes. you know needs to make the most friendly decision right in it's, terms of right and and that's the thing is uh there's also the thing where it's like you know i'm glad that the games are still coming out i'm still enjoying the games yeah. you know i'm not gonna say like i'm not gonna boycott the first triple a game to go digital exclusive unless it i mean Apex Not, Legends is a hit, digital exclusive, yes. and is free. Yeah, well, yeah. I yeah. I don't know if I'm... I'm not sure if I want to push free to play, but that's a different podcast. Well, how about that other thing where uh, Forknife... Forknife? Yeah. Forknife. Uh, where Forknife has those empty cases you can buy at Target and Walmart. Yes. That's just that's, V-Bucks. That's the thing. Just V-Bucks. Yeah, that's the thing I was thinking of is they could just have, like, you could buy the physical case, and then when you open it, it's just a code for the digital game, but you still have a physical case. They do that with a lot of games. Yeah. So, I mean, there's that option, too. Um, there's some things you can do, but we'll, we'll have to see where it goes. Um, for But, yeah, for right now, they definitely seem to be on the decline. And so I want to give our two cents about it. Yeah. I think that's it for this episode. Yeah. We'll um, see you guys on the next podcast, or um, please check out other things on this channel. Yeah. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe. It means the world. Yes. And comment, tell us what you think about digital versus physical. We are, especially for these podcasts, kind of a large part about this is the whole discussion aspect of it. We wanted topics that people could openly discuss. Um, so please comment and tell us how you feel about this. We want to kind of hear more perspectives, more viewpoints. I'm sure everyone who listens does. So uh, with that, see you guys next time. Soink out. Soink in.